Welcome to the Becoming a Streamer podcast, where we sit down with streamers and learn more about their journey and how they got to where they're at today. I'm your host, co-founder of Pipeline Stone Mountain 64, and today we're joined by Swagger, a family man, three years into streaming, now over 88,000 followers. He actually topped the leaderboards in PUBG and more recently won the Twitch Rivals showdown for Escape from Tarkov. You can find him at twitch.tv slash swagger, that's S-W-A-G-G-E-R. And without further ado, enjoy the episode. Swagger, dude, thanks so much for joining in on the uh, podcast today. Appreciate you taking some time to talk about your uh, streaming and everything. Yeah, no, great great to, uh, you know, excited to be here and uh, looking forward to chatting with you. Yeah, man, before we get um, too deep into it, I always like to kind of start and, you know, if somebody hasn't seen you before or anything, like what, what kind of content are you creating these days? Um, what games are you playing? What platform are you on right now? Yeah, so uh, I, I recently just made the switch from PUBG about three, four months ago and uh, started full-time streaming uh, Escape from Tarkov. And uh, it's it's been great. It's been uh, a little rough making the switch, you know, being a full-time PUBG streamer and then switching over to uh, Escape from Tarkov, obviously, from a viewer's standpoint. But um, it's been great. Was your audience pretty, like, down for you playing that in the first place or was there some hesitation with it? Yeah, I think, you know, I think you get a, it's kind of a 50-50, right? You know, you get viewers that like you for your personality and also like your gameplay. And then you have, you know, the complete opposite where they're just there for the the, the gameplay, right? So, um, you know, it was it was welcoming, but then you also get why aren't you playing PUBG and, you know, you get a lot of those type of questions, so. Yeah, definitely. And so um, before you even got into streaming then and got into it in the first place was, I mean, was this like entertainment and getting into that field? Was that something you were even interested in or like what were you doing before you got into streaming and making content? Um, You know, for me overall, it, um, you know, I've always played video games, right? My whole life. I think a lot of us that do this as a, as a career at this point, we, you know, we've, we've had that history in, in playing games. Um, and I was always told by a couple of different people, I should start streaming. And I just, I, I didn't have the opportunity. I was working, you know, in the corporate world and, um, you know, some things changed from a corporate standpoint, you know, corporate job standpoint that gave me the opportunity to, to come and stay at home and, and start trying to stream full time. So um, that's kind of how the uh, the streaming career started for me. Wow. So, I mean, corporate world doesn't sound like uh, you were making videos or <laughs> talking with a whole bunch of people. Yeah, no, I, um, you know, from just to kind of give you like a, a one minute, you know, background, I, I worked at a uh, telecommunication company, the second largest in the in the States. And uh, I was a manager for their network operations center, thought I was going to retire. And, and, you know, I was there 15 years and uh, they the company got bought out and uh, they relocated. And, you know, my wife's were big in the family here and um, she didn't want to move. So they, uh, you know, I took a big severance and, and they took care of me and um, you know, I had that opportunity with the severance to start streaming to see if I could, I can make it as far as, you know, revenue and income standpoint. And, uh, you know, here we are. So <laughs> that's how it all began. That's awesome. And so, I mean, was this something that though you had an interest in, in the first place? Like, were you watching any Twitch streams or YouTube or is this just something like, you know what, I've heard about this. I'm just going to try it out. Yeah. So I think, um, you know, for the, for the year prior going into streaming, I, I used to watch Twitch a lot, even at work, you know, like we had a lot of downtime because we were closing and, and things like that. So, um, I was very familiar with your, you know, the back in the, the CS days, the Hecos and, and summit and, and doc and those guys. And I used to watch them early on, uh, Tim, you know, Tim, the top man. And, uh, you know, I kind of made the decision, look, I played, you know, I would come home every night and I would, you know, do the, do the family wife thing. And, you know, husband thing. And then, you know, I kind of would play to two, three hours at night. And uh, when the opportunity happened with my job, uh, I just said, why don't I start recording and streaming and see where it goes? And, you know, it was, I was very fortunate on how things worked out. Yeah, no, I mean, it's a, it's definitely an interesting position to be in and to kind of start into it. Like when you started doing it in the first place, was it, I mean, did you like see anything on tw- uh, on YouTube as well? Like, did you have any interest in doing anything like that? Or was it just like, you know what? streaming twitch is the platform like how many years ago did you really start it up i guess well you know what's funny is um you know back in the uh, you know i started playing arma uh you know i played all sorts of games obviously but um you know about 10 years ago when they had i think it was justin's tv 
um, a couple of my buddies, and he's a supporter of the channel now to this day. He said, you know, you should you should definitely stream this stuff. And I kind of, you know, I was living in the corporate world, and I, I didn't have the time, and I didn't. I wish I made the decision then, because I think I would be in a much a much better place now that I'm. You know, I'm in a great place, but like you you know you know what I mean. So, um, but as far as platform wise, and in, in in what made me do it. Um, I, I don't know. You know, Twitch was kind of the thing at that point. You know, you didn't have the other, you know, you obviously you had YouTube and you had, you know, Mixer was coming, growing at that point, I believe. Um, but, you know, Twitch was kind of just what I chose. And I started looking into how you stream. And, that, you know, I think I did what a lot of people do. You, you know, look at YouTube videos and how to set up things and, in you know, different settings. And, and that was kind of just the, the beginning of, oh, I got to get a camera. And, you know, so it was... Um, it was very basic in the beginning for me. It's, it's funny looking back at the audio in the videos of, um, you know, my first month or two of streaming. It's, it's kind of crazy. Oh yeah. I, I feel like that's with like everything with content though. You know, you look back and it's like, man, oh, this could have been so much better. And you, you just keep learning more stuff with it. Right. Yep. And in terms of like, you know, buddy saying you should stream it. Was that something that like your overall just had a higher skill set for it? Or do you know, or like what, what do you think that was? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, I'm a little bit more, re I mean, I'd say reserved, but I'm not. But, you know, I'm very vocal on my channel, right? And, you know, sometimes it's a positive, sometimes it's a negative. But I've always been, I think, above average of a player compared to, you know, your normal your normal FPS shooter, you know, person, you know, player. So I've always had that drive to be good. And that was one of it, right? And on top of the commentary of, you know, the trash talk. And, you know, I think that, you know, putting those two things, you know, together has been, it was, it was pretty good. So the people that I was playing with at the time were like, yeah, you need to stream this stuff. This is, this is crazy. This is fun. You're killing everybody in the server. And like, and, and that's kind of where those comments happened. And then, um, you know, that's kind of how it all started. And uh, it's been, it's been great. Yeah, no, I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely always a good sign whenever you do see anything like that, or, you know, even if you're just talking or whatever it is, like uh, it, it, it's a good sign in general. And then when you did start streaming, I mean, did you kind of come at it with like, um, you know, an attack strategy or, or a plan with it uh, in that, you know, you're, you've got time. Like, is it something where, you know, oh, I'm going to stream every day. I'm just going to kind of do a stream, see what happens. What was your kind of first approach to it, more or less? Yeah, I think the, you know, uh, it, it's weird because as I was watching streams, PUBG hadn't been released prior to that. You know, it was a lot of, uh, you know, different games. You know, mainly I was watching CSGO at the time or Overwatch, that type of thing. So when I when I did my research, you know, I've obviously, you know, for me, it was having a camera, having set schedule, um, making sure, you know, just from the research I did, right, personally, like, what do I enjoy when I watch another streamer, right? And and, and so that was kind of like, oh, I, you know, you pick up on those things, Um and then, you know, I used every social media platform to, to some extent as far as what, you know, how to advertise yourself to the point where sometimes, you know, they would get deleted off, delete videos would get or clips would be deleted off Reddit or YouTube or, you know, um, and I contacted anybody on my Steam, you know, any, any network I could to try to get my name out there. And it's, it's you know, you're, you're a small fish in a big pond, you know what I mean? And, uh, and that's where I think the challenge is today uh, I think I got in at the right time because, you know, it was big. Twitch was big then. But if you think three, four years ago, it was definitely smaller than it is today. Obviously, it's grown, you know, it's it's grown a lot since when I first started. So I think I got in at a good time. And, and those are the strategies that I used. You know, every time I would go live, it was a set schedule. It was communicate with anybody I know. And, um, you know, that's kind of how I got the ball rolling. That's awesome. And so you started about three or four years ago then? Yeah, so I, I will be in this August, I think, will be three years um, as far as like full time. At, at first, I, you know, I knew the corporate world was was shutting down and I would, you know, I kind of planned the last from April to August. I was doing three to four hours a night streaming. And then, you know, as soon as that that was done, I, I went full time. And one of the things I did was I also, you know, I looked at when the market was busy and when it wasn't busy. And I tried to make my schedule around that, you know, if you. If you if you try to stream when the big guys are on, no matter what platform, you're going to not get as many viewers. So you know, for a while in the beginning, I did uh, like 11 to 6 a.m. and and did the overnight shift. And there were still bigger streamers. Don't get me wrong, but you know the you could gain a lot more viewers if you try to work your your you know your schedule around some of the big time streamers. 
Oh, a- absolutely. And uh, with that, though, I got to imagine, like, you know, your family, how, how did they really respond to <laughs> that decision to even to even come across that? Yeah. So, you know, I have, um, I have a wife obviously and, and two kids, um, you know, in the beginning I, I did that for a year, so it was tough, but my wife's always been very, very supportive as far as what I want to do. And she, she knows the hard work I put in to, to try to make, you know, make things work and grow. So, um, yeah, it was tough at first, but you know, it's like any, I mean, it's, you know, for me, it's, it's a business and a job as much as a passion. Right. So, yeah, if you got to work, you know, there are plenty of people that work third shift and overnight in, in any normal job that have family. So uh, we didn't treat it as, as anything different. The only good thing is, is I'm here in the house and, and I'm home, you know, so I'm not leaving to go to a normal day to day job and working third shift type of thing. Yeah, it's it's definitely can be very consuming just in terms of hours and what what you're doing, though. I got to I mean, that's a very long stream schedule in general. Did you have it super routine, though? It was always the same times like. What was like a, a day for you when you started it out? Yeah. So when I first started streaming, it, you know, like I said, the the first three or four months were just three or four hours after work. Right. But as soon as I went live or when, when I went full time, it was a set schedule. Make sure I show up at 11 o'clock. You know, don't be late. And I treated it like a job, you know, and and make sure you kind of get I, I was getting off at six. I didn't go any further. So then people knew, all right, when I get on at night, Swag's going to be on. He's going to be streaming. Um, and let me tune in. And I've done that now. I've switched schedules multiple times. And as long as you stick to it, you get different viewer base. And they and they and they start to learn when you're going to be on, and they want to be there when you're on. So they might plan a day around it, right? They somebody if they got errands they got to do in the morning, and they you know a lot of people like watching creators, content creators over you know obviously shows at this point, right? So I think that having that set set schedule in the beginning and when you start off streaming is it's super super important. What's your schedule like now? So like, are you still keeping about the same amount of time? You're shifting the times just that it's happening or like, are you spending more time on emails or working on video or taking a different approach to that at all? Yeah. So I think, you know, I, I, I currently now do a kind of a nine to nine to seven, um, Monday through Thursday, Sundays are, are kind of, uh, uh, early or late afternoon, I always kind of join. And then on, on Fridays and Saturdays, if I have time, I stream, right? But the set days and I'm there are, are always Sunday through Thursday. Um, it's, you know, I think I think you can relate to this a little bit. We all spend a lot of time, and I think that people don't understand from a viewer's standpoint sometimes the time we spend before and after stream, right? So um, things have gotten a little bit more relaxed for me to some extent because I think once you get in the groove of things, it's a little bit easier. But in the, in the beginning, I was spending a lot of time, you know, prepping before and after the stream where now it's kind of, it's kind of routine for me. Yeah, I, I'm a hundred percent. And there's, there's so much that goes on in terms of everything that you're trying to do for your stream or other platforms you're trying to engage on or whatever. It, it, it really is a lot more that goes into it than just being live at that time. And you said, you know, it's gotten easier for you. I'm curious, do you, did you set up any like systems to help you with that at all? Like, moderators or um, content managers or anybody that you've brought on to help you with some of your processes and anything you do? Yeah. So one of the things, um, and, and we just started doing this and I was kind of late. Uh, I, I wish I started a YouTube channel early, early on. And I didn't because my focus was so much into playing the game and creating the content that I didn't capitalize on the YouTube side of things. Um, one thing that I did, and I know a couple of other people have done this and it's been pretty successful and it, and it seems to be working. Um, is, you know, I got somebody, I, I reached out somebody from the channel that was very passionate about trying to create content for, for YouTube. And, you know, the uh, decision I made was, well, if I'll make you an editor and you can basically manage the channel in any revenue we see, I will send the revenue to you. Um, and I think that that's a good way to do it because it, as long as you, obviously I'm monitoring the videos that are going out, um, it, it, they have a passion, right? And in in, to make it successful. So if, if the revenue starts coming in and they see successful business side of it, well, they're going to want to do it better and make more videos and, you know, make the content better. So that's kind of the avenue I've taken from a who manages my YouTube side of things. Um, obviously, I still kind of, you know, make sure that it's good and, and, and check the videos, that type of thing. Um, as far as everything else, I've kind of done that all on my own. Obviously, I have great mods. They handle the Discord, the, you know, the, the channel moderating type of uh, your side of things. Um but that's pretty much it. And, you know, the email and stuff like that and the Twitter and 
and the other social media platforms I kind of do on my own. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a it's a lot to do in general. And so wherever you can find opportunities to, you know, make those things easier, it definitely uh, whether it's thumbnails or whatever, it could definitely help. Um, and then, like, as you've been going through all of this, I mean, you've been doing it for three years now. Is there anything that kind of stands out to you as you've been going through it of like maybe breaks that you had or opportunities that you've seen that you kind of went after and ended up working really well? Maybe like a game switch or early getting into a game or anything like that? <clears throat> I, I would say that, you know, if, if, if this question is more directed towards somebody that's new trying to come into the industry or people that are doing it now, I would say take advantage of every moment you can. Um, you know, one, one of the things that just recently, and, and I've been in a lot of these, is the, is the, the Twitch rivals that they have, right? Um, it gives you the opportunity, if you do well in them, and even if you don't do well, to broaden your audience to different viewers, obviously. Um, so most of the time when I have that type of opportunity, I try, I try our best, you know, we try our best because, because, you know, positive or negative people are still seeing you and they, and they're still, you know, they're, they're tuning into your channel and, and you definitely get more followers or viewers based off of, you know, events like that. The other thing is, sorry, go ahead. Uh, so the other thing too is, you know, I've, I've, I think it's a big deal as far as depending on the platform you have to attend, um, you know, your, your, your Twitch cons, your, your packs, things like that to try to network as much as you can. Yeah. And so you got to participate in some, uh, Twitch rivals events then. I mean, yeah. So I, I played in probably, I think five to seven or eight in the, the PUBG side of things. And then, uh, just this week, actually, we had the EFT, uh, escape from Tarkov rivals that we won. So it was, um, you know, there was, it was, it was a good time. There were some discrepancies in, in some of the rules and things like that. And, uh, you know, the outcome we have, it could have been different, but, uh, we really had no control of that. So, um, but no, it was, either way, it's a great experience, right? Like, I mean, it's good exposure, you know, one way or the other. Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's super awesome. How'd you kind of get into the PUBG ones in the first place? Like where you stream that, I mean, obviously that was the main game you're streaming a lot of, but. Yeah, so um, it's funny you say that. So in, early on in PUBG, as far as just, you know, advertisement, um, you know, I grinded. I basically played as much as I can, and I tried to, to work the leaderboard, so I got my name out there. Um, and then, you know, really it came down to just that. Um, you know, I also had the opportunity to to meet Chaco Taco. You know, obviously you're well aware and you know him. He's a great guy. Um, so him and I played together a lot as well, and we worked well together. We didn't have to think when we made decisions. We kind of just were always on the same page. So him and I started playing in those together and then it kind of just grew into, you know, people where they, we would, him or he or I would just get the invite. Hey, you guys playing together? And we, you know, we kind of would say yes or, you know, whatever the case may be. So it, nothing really like was kind of like a red flag of, Hey, you want to play in this? It kind of just fell in, in, in pieces. The, the pieces fell together. Um, and we kind of just rolled into playing and then we played every one. I think we played every one of the Twitch rivals for PUBG, which was, uh, which was great. That's awesome. Do you remember like, um, you know, when you're first starting out the first few months of it, uh, the, I guess like whether that's, uh, affiliate revenue or ad revenue or anything coming in, like, do you remember like the first time you started making any money from this and you're like, damn, okay, this, this business is starting to figure, you know, I'm starting to figure this out as a business and you know, where you either reinvested it or what you did with that. Yeah, I, I always, you know, you know, like I said, with the with my the current job situation, I was severance out and I, and I made a lot of I, I was making really good money for, for where I was at in the corporate world. So I had a lot of money saved and, and that was kind of my, you know, I gave myself two years from when I started to start streaming. And I think the moment when I started, when I hit like seven or eight hundred subs, I was kind of like, all right, if I can double this, uh, this is going to be, you know, this, the, it was kind of the aha moment, right? You know, 700 subs were great, but it wasn't a, a you know, a, it was obviously more than I've ever made with, with streaming. But that was kind of the, the I went to bed that night. I was like, look, I can do this. If I can, if I can get more exposure, more ad revenue, this type of thing, that when I hit the 700 subs, that was kind of the marker of you can, you can make it if you continue to do this. And then, you know, you kind of mentioned you, you changed games as well going forward with that. I mean, how is your, or, you know, switching over to Tarkov with that, how is your content 
I guess, strategy changed as you've gone through that as well? Has it really been like PUBG over to this? You played a couple of other games earlier. Like, what was that transition like? Yeah, the transition was tough. So, you know, I think that from a content creator standpoint, if you're if you have the option to, to be a variety streamer, then that's the, I mean, I think that's everyone's goal, right? Sure. Just um, do whatever yeah. all the time and <laughs> you're good to go. You're good to go. You do whatever they're going to tune in. They're going to watch it. It, it. Sadly, that wasn't the case for, for myself. You know, a lot of people knew me in the industry because of PUBG, right? Um, so any, it was very, very scary for me to switch over to another game. And, you know, quite frankly, PUBG was great to me. The game was great to me. But, you know, once you put 10,000 hours into a game, it's at a certain point, it's not as fun. Right. Um, so, you know, switching over the strategy was kind of, I'm just going to pull the band aid. And at first I was implementing other games at the end of my stream. I think that's important to do because it allows you to build your viewer base up while you're streaming to, you know, your normal game. And then, and then, you know, you can get kind of cut over to a new game and, and kind of get the feelers out there as far as, you know, what, what your viewers want. Right. But then at a certain point, I just pulled the bandaid off and said, you know what, I'm going to start streaming this every day and I'm going to become the best that I can at this game. So people recognize me. And and that's really my my attitude in in any game I play is to try to become the best. So people recognize me. That's awesome. And I mean, did you see, too, I I think it's generally uh, when you switch games, did you see that coming as a lot of new people and like you're building a new audience around this game or did you feel like it was I mean obviously you're gonna have some people that come over from it or did you feel like a lot of people you were kind of showing them and teaching them the game I think I, I think yeah I think the experience it's kind of a two or three you know answer question or uh, answer here I think you know we uh, originally I took probably a 50% hit at least in viewership subs revenue the whole nine yards right um but I also think that people enjoyed watching me go through the experience of escape, escape from Tarkov, right? It's, it's, it's not an easy game to learn. And it's not a, you know, most games like a Call of Duty or PUBG or CSGO or Valorant, I can kind of just hop in and point and click, right? That's fairly easy to do. Um, so switching to Tarkov was definitely a challenge for, for me in the beginning stages, anybody will tell you. Um, but I, you know, as far as like, we are definitely gaining a viewership People are recognizing who I am as a content creator in the Tarkov, into, you know, Tarkov world. Um, it's it's scary, but you know, it's working right now, I guess. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it definitely is, and that's what you know. I'm just always curious how different creators, when they switch games, how they feel about that, or you know, how that experience is even like for them in the first place, especially as you continue on and go um, into more and more. Uh, I guess if you had any um, other thoughts for uh, creators or advice or maybe even just a skill that you think has been really strong for you as you've been going through this, um, you know, if you have anything to say on that. Yeah, I think that um, and I've identified this my, myself, make sure you're having fun. You know, when, when a game or something you're doing isn't fun anymore, that's when the content becomes bad. And I think that's a huge thing to recognize as a content creator realize that if you're not having fun, pretty much the audience and the viewers are probably not having fun either. And they're not enjoying your content. And I finally realized that with PUBG. And that's when I made the switch. I, I, you know, there was a lot of things going on and the game is great, but I just wasn't having fun with it. And, and I think that, you know, a lot of viewers said, even when I made the switch to Tarkov, they could see that you, you could just see that I was having so much more fun, right? Because of the new game. And, and I think that, it's very hard to identify when you're not having fun. You know, everybody gets done streaming and you play a game and you're like, Oh, I had a good time, but you can, your, your body language shows it more than anything. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I mean, did you try other games too? You mentioned, you know, playing, playing your main game, ending your stream on, on something else, kind of introducing your audience to it. Was it something that's like, Oh man, I want to, I want to start learning this game. Like this is a good route. It's, it's got a lot of aspects that are similar to PUBG with like the intensity or whatnot to it. Or, you know, how did you kind of, figure that out so i've always so i did try other games um fortnite was one and and i had a lot of fun playing fortnite i did that i think for two or three weeks you know at the end of the stream for an hour i always played fortnite um it it just wasn't i'm more of a realistic player as far as when it comes to gaming and and what games are and you know that's where tarkov kind of hit home it kind of felt like a, a arma or arma 2 or like a daisy 
Um, and, and it kind of made me feel it's kind of PUBG, DayZ, put together type of feeling. And that's kind of, kind of where I fell in love with playing Tarkov right now. Um, and, and, and you can definitely see it in, in, in you know, I, I review my VODs a lot. And you can definitely see it early on, like how excited I was to play the game. Do you think, um, do you, do you review your VODs for like clips or is that, re- I mean, I guess you have the editor helping you with some of that now, but to an extent, but like, are you reviewing that for like how you improve the game? Or are you watching that back for your actual gameplay? So I'm glad you asked that question. And, and this kind of goes to more of a, also when you start streaming, right? I think it's important to review your VODs and see what you can improve on, right? Um, whether it's game related, content related, you know, interactions with, with the viewers, um, basically all of the above, right? Um, I don't do it as much as I used to, but I definitely still review review VODs to see what I can do better either in game or, or you know, interacting with the viewers. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I know some people are like, they're a bit hesitant to even look back at some of their own content. Um, I know, at least for myself, looking back at my content that's a few years old is like, oh man, what was I doing? Right, right. <laughs> but um, it's good too. I mean, you get a lot of insight from just even just even reading the comments as they're coming through. If you can't read something while you're in the heat of a moment or whatever, like, could you explain something better or wh- whatever it is, right? Yeah, I think um, that's that's one of the things that I try to, personally for myself, is I always try to interact with with the stream, with the viewers more than, than I see other streamers. It works, you know, it works both ways. Some people get by with it, but for me, the viewers are very important and I try to respond to them as much as I can. Yeah, absolutely. Is there anything that you do like, you know, do you have a Discord set up or like any other place where you where you do that, or is it a lot of kind of live in in your chat? That's where you're at. Yeah, it's typically in in chat during obviously being being live. Um, I try to answer DMs a lot. You know, it's a risky it's a risky thing sometimes to open some DMs, right? I'm sure you've experienced it. Um, but you know, I do get times where like, oh man, I can't believe you respond to this DM, or you know, I I think that. You can probably attest to this. It's very, when you end your stream, there's a lot of things we try to do in kind of a routine. And, and sometimes DMs are just insane, right? Like you get, you're getting whispers, you're getting DMs on all the social platforms and in Discord as well. So I try to interact within Discord if they're in, the, in at least in, in our Discord, right? Um, and, and that's, you know, I used to do sub days as far as playing with subs. And we're actually going to do that more now and incorporate that into Tarkov because I think it's important. Um, and a lot of people, it's crazy the amount of people that want to play games with you. And, um, so we're going to start doing We're going to start doing that as, as well. Um, we used to do it in PUBG and I saw it, it was very successful in PUBG. People had a great time with it. And, um, you know, I think you kind of just get busy and kind of in the moment where some things kind of drift off and, and I'm going to bring that back. So hopefully uh, the community will like it. That's awesome. Yeah. And PUBG had, they had some really good tools to bring everybody in too, especially if like custom games or stuff. Uh, but Tarkov has some, they have some fun things you could do with that for sure too. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about playing with, with viewers on, on Tarkov. That's awesome, man. Listen, well, uh, we're coming up on time here and, uh, you know, hugely appreciate you coming on, chatting a little bit, telling us about your story and everything. Um, if people do want to check you out, what's the spot where should they check you out? Oh, uh, you should check me out at twitch.tv slash swagger and or swagger on, on Twitter to, to shoot me a follow there as well. Awesome, for man. all live updates and, and things like that. Get on it. Check them out, especially if you're into Tarkov or anything. You know, this is a good time. It'll be great to see where you continue to go with everything as well. I know Tarkov's still very early days itself, but uh, it's awesome, man. Really excited to see where you're going and uh, appreciate you joining in. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. It's been a, it's been a blast and great talking with you. Absolutely.